Hi everyone, my name is Nicholas Merton and welcome to the introductory video of my course on SQL and Data Analytics for Beginners. And before we get started with anything, as much as I'm ready to jump into the course, I have to start off by asking you all a few simple questions. Do you like working with data? Do you like finding trends before they even happen? Or are you looking to become a more valuable asset in the workplace? Well, if you meet any of the scenarios I listed and even dozens that I didn't even mention, I can guarantee you're in the right place. Now, why am I so confident in saying that? I understand it's quite a big claim to make right off the bat. Well, the reason being is that SQL and data analytics year by year are becoming more demanded in the workplace. And in fact, a lot of companies are setting a standard where they at least expect you to understand the basics of these two skill sets. Now, why is that? Well, it's all due to one big fundamental change, big data. Now, what exactly is big data? I understand a lot of people kind of get confused with the term and it's kind of a, it's a generic term that's used a lot in the business world. Well, there's a, there's a fundamental um, kind of understanding behind it and a great way to really get a picture of it uh, is the research paper that I'm going to talk about in a second. If you'd like to get all the details on it and read more into it, I have a link down below so you can get some more information, but I'm going to generally talk about this certain research paper that was released in 2013. So when this research paper came out, uh, it was stated that over 90%, 90% of all information that we've recorded through the history of humankind was recorded in the last two years. Think about that. From 2011 to 2013, 90% of all information recorded throughout human history was recorded in those years. That's a good image of what it means uh, to be in an era of big data. Uh, and that trend of growing data collection that's in an exponential pattern is not stopping. We are continuing to collect even more as we move towards a technological world. And this has become very clear as to why, you know, why we're experiencing this. I mean, think about it. We use more social media than ever. We give more information and data out there to companies, whether it be through signing up for new accounts, um, doing surveys, questionnaires, uh, cooperating with different types of businesses. I mean, there's just so much more data that's available in the corporate world uh, than there was originally about five or 10 years ago. So we really are entering an extremely interesting period where we have all these large data sets and we can start to gain valuable insights from them. So this is why SQL and data analytics go hand in hand, but we'll cover a little bit more about it in general over the next few minutes. But outside of that, guys, uh, I'm ready to start on the course and ready to get into the introduction, but I just want to make clear that I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can. If you have any questions that I haven't answered, though, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So anyways, guys, let's get straight into the introduction. So what exactly is SQL? Or you might have heard it as SQL. Well, they're interchangeable terms. It's the exact same thing. But SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Now, I know the term might sound complicated, uh, might kind of confuse it first, but basically it's the language we're going to be using with uh, managing data in databases. Um, and in SQL, you're going to be querying, inserting, updating, and modifying data. So you're going to be generating tables and information kind of like you would in Excel uh, with different, uh, different variables and different, um, different values to put in those variables. Uh, so a good example that I can help you uh, can help give to you to really start to understand this is maybe for example customer information. So when you sign up for any social media account, let's say for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you name it, any name, they have large scale databases that store your information. So for example, they need your name, your email, your location, your gender, your username and password, etc. The uh, the possibilities are really endless, uh, and the same goes for things like business information. For example, if you need to keep uh, financial information like sales numbers or how many units you sold to a certain location or what category of units you sold, whatever it may be, the possibilities are continued, continually in, uh, endless in that sense. There's endless possibilities. Um, and that's what's so great about SQL. And the even better thing about SQL is that even though you can use it for so many different ways of collecting data, it's relatively easy to pick up, or at least the beginning steps of it. If you want to learn the beginner level uh, aspects of SQL and really get fluid with it, um, it only takes about two to three weeks. Uh, whereas most programming languages can take a few months to really get fluent with, uh, SQL is really quick and easy to pick up. And it, the reason is, is it's because it's made of a small syntax, meaning that there's a few statements and terms that you have to learn to really you know, code in the language. Um, and one of the great things is, is that if you're, if you're kind of afraid of getting into coding in general, 
and you're looking for that starter language to really get kind of into, to really get feasible and understanding how to program and code, uh, SQL is perfect for that. It is a perfect language to start out with. So don't be afraid of it. Try it out, give it a try, and just see how it works and if you can pick it up. I guarantee that some people can go even quicker than two to three weeks. It's really not that difficult to learn. So next up, uh, we're going to cover a little bit about data analytics. Now, I have a large definition on the screen that I could read off, but I really want to keep it simple. Data analytics is using large sets of data to provide visual insights that we can use at our business or organization. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, types of analytics, uh, which I'll go over in just a second. But as you can see in the pictures that I have uh, below, these are pictures from the software we're going to be using called Tableau which helps gives us very visual, colorful, and modern looking insights on the data sets that we can be looking at uh, at any given time and that we can plug into Tableau. And th this Tableau isn't the only software you can use for visual analytics. There's all kinds of different uh, visual analytics software. I just prefer Tableau. It's one of the premier choices if you're trying to get into uh, using data analytics uh, in the corporate world. But uh, it's really cool because there's all kinds of different types of analytics that you can gain from taking data sets. So for example, uh, you can get descriptive analytics. And basically speaking, that's plugging in information and saying, okay, how did we do um, through uh, the beginning of the year to the end of the year in sales? So it's something that we have the data sets and we can just visually see you know, how the data lays out and we can look to spot trends. Predictive is where we can look towards the future, where we can use tools like forecasting or trend lines where we can start to see where uh, certain uh, numerical values are going over time or you know what our sales might look like over the next five to ten years and then prescriptive is where we can start finding solutions to get the outcomes that we want um, and start prescribing solutions to get uh, uh, to go towards certain uh, trends that we want to go towards for our business organization so before we jump into setting up our own database and start learning about SQL, which I know you all are excited to start on, I really want to emphasize why the two uh, go to hand in hand, SQL and data analytics. On the left here, we have a table of information uh, where we have nine individuals who entered into a survey for a golf company online and they gave very basic information of their gender, their age, location, and the product they were interested in buying. Now, as we can see with this table, uh, it's kind of hard to spot trends, uh, but we have the information laid out here. It's very neat, it's structured, and it's laid out in columns and rows. But we just don't know really how to spot visual trends with it. We can't really get an assessment. If we really sat here and looked at it, we could probably do that. But when you're looking at data sets in the real world, you're going to be dealing with thousands of rows and a multitude of columns of information for each um, ID uh, of uh, information that you lay out in there. So. It's, it's usually a lot, much larger data sets. But even with this, we're still kind of at a point where we're like, oh, we can't really see any visual trends. Well, let's see what visual analytics can do when we start plugging in the information. And as we can start seeing with the charts that are coming up, and specifically uh, the pie charts and the bar charts, we can start to see that there's some obvious trends in our data. So for example, we should start focusing on our target audience. And our target audience is mostly made up of males. It's mostly made up of people between the ages of 45 to 60. We can see that most people who did the survey reside in County A, and we also see that two-thirds, a whopping two-thirds majority of people want to buy golf clubs from our company, or at least are interested in buying golf clubs. So we can obviously see from just a small level of information that we're collecting a lot of vital data, and visualizing it can help us get insights towards what we should market um, our product towards. So we should obviously you know, produce golf clubs towards an older male audience in County A. Right off the bat, we've already got visual insights off of something so simple. So it shows you the tools of really taking data and plugging it into visual insights. So now that you guys stuck with me and uh, you let me cover all that, I think we can uh, start jumping into it. If you guys would like to continue, which I hope you're interested enough to join into the uh, course, uh, you're welcome to click the video in the playlist below or click the annotation over the part one labeled on the slide that I have right now. But guys, I'm excited you stuck through with it, and I'm glad to see uh, that some of you are interested in learning about the basics of SQL and data analytics. Uh, don't shy away from it. If you have any comments, ask me. Please don't be afraid to ask me any questions if you have them. I'm happy to answer and help as much as I can. 
Uh, but yeah, let's get started, guys, and I'm ready to start this process with y'all. Let's begin.